Welcome to the Richmond Events Podcast, Leaders in the Industry, where we sit together with top-notch leaders discussing important topics in the HR, IT, marketing, finance and healthcare industry. But today we look to the financial industry. Topics by today will be mainly about crypto, banking, startups. For this, we have invited Tobias Rettmeier from Steakhouse and Stoibing AG, which is holding an industry session at the Richmond Financial Industry Forum in May to talk about what it takes to be a leader in the financial industry. So now sit back and enjoy. Welcome, Tobias. Hi, thanks for having me. Perfect. So let's start and tell me a little bit who you are and what's your story behind your knowledge. Yeah, sure. So first of all, I'm happy to be here and chat with you. And I'm living and working in Frankfurt at the moment where um, I already work for multiple startups, especially in the crypto world. I uh, founded some myself and I actually was part of Deloitte in, in the past as well. Uh, while I worked for Deloitte, I was a CEO of a crypto fund. And today I'm mainly an advisor in the crypto space for corporations. Um, and I'm doing crypto knowledge on Instagram. Uh, the account is called Steakhouse, if somebody's interested. Not like the food, but staking in, in crypto. So Steakhouse, German word for house. And I'm also founding a crypto startup at the moment. I cannot tell you too much about it yet. Um, but we plan to enable people to invest into a crypto index. Um, but a real crypto investment, not something that... I, I always say pretends to be crypto, uh, but in fact, is still traditional finance. Yeah, but that's my story so far and what I do at the moment. Okay, can we go a little bit deeper in the part of what is the interest of your financial industry story or the interest in the sidestep then in crypto and blockchain? Yeah, sure. Um, so first, I um, did my Master of Finance at Frankfurt School. Uh, so that's where maybe a little bit my financial uh, services or financial background comes from. And while I did an internship in a consulting firm uh, during my studies, I actually created a presentation um, about crypto to ed educate my co-workers. Um, I did an internship in a um, financial industry consulting firm. So therefore, that was a little bit related um, and yeah, that presentation that that catched me myself about crypto, and I started digging deeper into into the topic. And after then, I also wrote my thesis about tokenizing business processes. Um, and I worked for some crypto startups, as I said. Uh, for one, I was the CEO, and um, by setting up the whole fund structure, etc. And during that time, I saw that there are huge opportunities for also for traditional finance in crypto. And I decided to work with financial institutions on developing this crypto strategy while also building my, my own crypto startup to combine basically the best, um, the best of both worlds. And yeah, well, I would say here I am. <laughs> Great. But actually also behind startups and, and, to work with these, there are um, also some risk behind that. Um, so what constantly inspires you to keep working in your own startup and also comparison to the German bank? Yes, yeah, so um, of course, there's always risk. First of all, if you um, start your own company, there's always risk because you, well, you have this vision where you want to go, but you never know uh, which obstacles will be in your way. But I see every day how fast the blockchain ecosystem is growing and how many great products and services are created there. And um, if you think about it, to bring the connection to the um, to to the traditional financial industry, um, if you think about how manual, for example, trading still is, even with all the uh, algo trading in place today, the blockchain technology can automate much more with smart contracts, liquidity pools, etc. 
Um, and this development shows me every day that I'm part of a pretty great evolution um, that will change our way, how we work in, in the financial industry. And I'm pretty happy every single day uh, to be part of it and actually um, be able to, to also shape the industry. Okay. For that way, I still wish you good luck. And yeah, thank you. Look a little bit on, on another side because um, to found a startup, um, then you are also in a leader role. Um, so what makes a good leader in your eyes? Mm, this is a very good question. And um, I actually would go a little bit into the direction that a great leader should not micromanage. And this is also very important for founding a startup. Of course, in the beginning, you're responsible for everything in the company. But um, micromanaging can also hinder a company after some point because that was also what I experienced a lot when I worked for other startups that the founders could not let go and thereby hold also back the growth of the company. Um, in bigger corporations, I, which I worked for, usually the bosses decided to stay out of the daily business and let everyone focus on their skills. And in addition, I would say that a great leader must work for and with his team. Um, so also trust the team to that, that they hired the right people to do the job uh, they were actually hired to do. Um, and even if something might go wrong, there's usually no single person who's responsible or who's to blame. But the team must always work together um, on becoming stronger and learn from mistakes. But as I said, It should be together and not like blaming somebody. And as an example, like in our startup, uh, when something goes wrong, we sit together, we discuss what went wrong and how a similar situation uh, in the future can be handled. And for us, especially in the beginning, it was a lot like when we talk to potential investors, um, usually something went wrong, especially in the first two or three talks. Um, and after that, we sat together, regardless who maybe maybe somebody messed up, but it didn't matter. We just decided on, okay, how should we do it, do it better next time? And what maybe led to the situation that we had to discuss it? So, yeah, I think this is very important for a leader to, to find a structure where, where it's possible to work together on, on making the, uh, the team stronger. Yeah, it's every time, like every day we learn additional uh, new things. Um, yes, exactly. Um, also, you announced a little bit topics about you, your future or that you have some other projects. So what are your plans in the near future? Mm -hmm. Is there a little bit more detailed about your upcoming projects, blockchain, crypto, and tokenization business? Yeah, sure. Um, as you said earlier as well, um, I'm I I'm working in, in a bank at the moment and I'm working at my own startup. And so my my future or my plans for the future are obviously <laughs> around those two. And um, at first, I want to enable the bank I work for at the moment to professionally do automated crypto trading for and with its clients. Um, we are very close actually to offer the clients a competitive trading solution so that they don't need to have their own crypto trading desk, but can, um, I would say, equivalently to the traditional markets, use our services to trade crypto and tokenize assets. So we also want to offer both um, and then also trade those tokenized assets. Um, I think it's very important to, to say that there will be this connection to the traditional markets as well, because the, the both of the markets, they are not that different in the end, how, how you do the trading. Of course, you can have automated market makers, for example. You also have traditional um, order book trading. So yeah, that's something we are working on and we are pretty close to, uh, to have the first clients working with us together on that. And um, also, I hope that I can talk about it in more detail um, very soon, maybe at the conference. Um, but we are also working very hard in my startup on providing everyone with an option to invest in multiple ways in, in, 
a DeFi index, which we are currently building. Um, I, I don't know if everybody is um, familiar with the term DeFi. It's decentralized finance. So that means bringing the traditional financial uh, services on the blockchain and, for example, um, automate them and thereby also make, make them cheaper for everybody. And um, so, yeah, that's what we are doing. And with that, we plan to offer people, crypto native or crypto newbies, a way to basically invest into interest-bearing crypto assets. I would say interest-bearing in quotes because it's, n it's not really an interest. But uh, it's similar to, to traditional interest, um, interest being assets. Um, but I also always find new projects. So because that's what I love to do. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to the future and also to the talk in Switzerland soon. Okay. We know that um, blockchain and crypto is still in another world, um, mm -hmm. especially for many people around here and um, if we talk about blockchain then there are more some question mark as others um, do you have some simple tips uh, about blockchain mm, you you mean how to learn more about the topic of blockchain or how to, uh, to learn or how to to understand a little bit better mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We talk um, on business or on leisure about blockchain. Is there something where you have some simple tips? Yeah, sure. So um, everybody interested in the blockchain technology should start with understanding where the idea is coming from. And um, I do not really mean the version like to get rid of all banks, what was the often um, a big discussion in the beginning of blockchain, but I rather mean that um, how it makes sense from a business perspective to use the blockchain technology. And there are actually pretty great open lectures from the University of Basel. Um, just go on their website and, and check them out. It's about blockchain technology and DeFi, and they are fully open. You can just listen to them and, and learn more about it. And Yeah, so learn more about the technology and um, also possible applications, actually, of the technology. They are also discussed in those lectures. So I think this is one of the best resources. Um, I know that the Frankfurt School Blockchain Center also offers some resources. They also have a DLT talents um, and I think also DeFi talents program, but I'm not sure about that yet. Um, but I think a great foundation of the blockchain knowledge is key to understand how financial institutions can use the blockchain technology um, to improve their processes by themselves and actually, you know, not only trade the assets, but use the technology to, um, yeah, to apply it in, in the future. And they can use the technology as an asset class. They can offer clients new products in DeFi, the metaverse, or just invest into the technology. But For that, you need a ground foundation about what the technology is about and what it makes or what, what it's possible to provide you with, I would say. Great. Just a final question, especially regarding uh, our future to see your lives in, in Interlac in May. Your title Can crypto assets be used in traditional banking to create new market potential? What is your short or small teaser in that topic to give the delegates uh, a good motivation for the Richmond financial industry? Yeah, so um, during my presentation, we will talk about the right time to start utilizing the benefits of the blockchain technology and why this time is actually here for most of the financial institutions. Uh, we will, of course, um, also talk about the best path to succeed in crypto, the ob obstacles and challenges that you will face if you start applying the blockchain technology or want to trade it, whatever your, your plans are with it. With, our, with it. Um, but also we will talk about the opportunities and finally we will discuss which crypto assets um, are most likely to prevail and why this might be the case. I, and I don't mean 
normal coins, but really the crypto assets, the idea of crypto assets, which might prevail. And uh, I think everybody who is slightly interested in the topic will find out why it makes sense not only to be interested in uh, to the blockchain technology, but actually start becoming part of the blockchain future right now. And so I think everybody will benefit from uh, from this session. Great. So now it's time again to, to say thank you to you to join today and then join in mid-May in Interlaken. Um, thank you for the podca podcast here, leaders in the industry. Thank you, Tobias. Yeah, thank you again for having me. <laughs>